we are here with the lovely Sid to celebrate her new single, Insane. It comes out everywhere today. Um, so first off, I just want to start by welcoming you, Sid, and saying congratulations. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Of course. Um, your new single, Insane, deals with a messy breakup. How do you channel those vulnerable moments like that into your music? Honestly, this song was written a bit differently. Usually I'm pulling from my own situations, but this time it was, I mean, it was still something I went through, but it wasn't from my perspective. It was, I was actually dating this guy and I don't know. I, I think people are going to relate to it. If you've ever been in this position, it is literally the worst feeling ever. And this is the one time I've ever like felt this. I was like, oh, I hate this. You know that they're not over their ex. And like when they kiss you, you know they're thinking about somebody else. And it is the most disturbing, gut-wrenching feeling ever. But anyways, I, I thought it would make a good song and be kind of relatable because even though it pissed me off he was experiencing that because I knew he never admitted either. I knew he was though. Um, I was like, this would be a good song. So I kind of wrote it in his perspective, even though, you know, it sounds like I'm singing it about personal experience. I actually got the idea from my ex-boyfriend. So messy, but relatable. Of course, of course. Um, it definitely is the season of powerful breakup songs, I'd say. So what was the most cathartic part about making it for you? What do you mean by that? Like, what was... Like, how did it help you move on and how did it help you, like, understand the situation better? Yeah, I mean, I'd say my writing in general, it's always been very therapeutic for me. It helps me to sit there in, like, an echoey hallway and just write out my feelings. It kind of starts in the form of poetry and then I put music behind it and boom, you got a song. And once I make that song, I kind of realize, oh, this has helped me process and kind of understand better what I'm feeling. And then you know, it's actually rewarding because if it's a negative experience that I went through, at least I got a song out of it. That's kind of how I feel about it. So I'm like, you know, it's rewarding in a way. I'm like, I'm glad I went through the experience. It wasn't fun, but you know. Yeah, definitely. And in a way it helps other people deal with the emotions by sure. listening to it as well. So that's awesome. That's what I want. That's what I love too. Is of I've course. People DM me saying, hey, like, this song relates to me or you relate to me or, you know, sometimes I do live streams on Instagram and TikTok and uh, I get to meet some of, you know, the listeners and hear their stories and kind of follow along with what they're doing, which I love doing as well. So anything to relate and, you know, be that person. I, I love that. Um, I'd say that this song has like a rock angst feel to me that like from artists kind of reminds me of like Paramore or Olivia Rodrigo almost. Are there any artists that are inspiring you right now when you write? Yeah, honestly, this song kind of gave me an Evanescence vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing, Paramore. It's a bit different from what I'm used to, but I don't even know. When, when I first wrote it, I was like, this kind of has... If you heard the original track, like right when we were in the process, which this song has been through a lot, um, but I kind of got this like inspiration from like 80s rock songs and there's this guitar solo at the end and it just shreds. And I was like, we got to keep that in there. Like I needed that punch. Um, so it is a bit different. And honestly, I struggled digesting it a bit just because it's not my typical sad girl music that I usually gravitate towards writing, but yeah, I've, I've grown to really love it. Definitely. Um, I guess my best question to ask here is what's your way to get over a breakup? Do you have any advice for your fans? Is there any way you deal with it? Ooh, oh man. It's a tough one. I wish I could take my own advice, but, uh, Honestly, the best way to get over a breakup, block on everything and their friends. And and I know that seems petty. If that means you have to have a conversation with that person, hey, I'm not mad at you. I have no animosity, but I'm trying to be healthy. So I'm distancing myself. But 
honestly the best way to get over a breakup you don't see pictures of them you don't see pictures of them hanging out with their friends on their friends stories you cut off all communication you have the self-control to not go and look at the new girls that they're following every day that is hard once you get mm -hmm. past that step and you can really like have the discipline to distance yourself give yourself six months of just them not existing like don't check it you know you can even i think mute the, the friends stories and stuff that's a new trick that i've learned but yeah i've i've done that a couple times i had one real nasty breakup uh back when i was i want to say like 17 years old it was on and off thing first love but very mm -hmm. intense we dated for years and i had zero self-control and i kind of lost respect for myself in a way because when you're just chasing after a person so long and you're just like what am i doing so really every relationship after that that i had to get over was pretty easy i, I hate to say that but i learned a lot i'm like here's how you do it here's mm -hmm. the science and the the human psychology behind actually getting over somebody you make them not exist and give yourself about six months of not looking at that stuff and you'll be over it and you won't even realize you know like yeah and blocking like also just helps you not reach out or them not reach back out to you so you get yourself yeah. back in that vicious cycle but i will say it is a vicious cycle because <laughs> back in the day when i had that really hard breakup i was blocked unblock block unblock i was crazy totally i was but you know everyone goes through something like that and you learn what to do for next time <laughs> um so what was your favorite memory making this single probably um when we had this this person come in and do this guitar solo yeah it needed that extra punch there at the end and i just I don't know, this guy came in the studio one day and uh, he was he was a buddy of my producer slash manager and he just came in there and I was like, what are you hearing for this? I kind of just explained the vibe that I was hearing and he just made it come alive. And that's, that's awesome. cool. Yeah. Um, so kind of piggybacking off that, how did um, working with the legendary Keith Thomas help you form your single and make it into what it is today? You know, Keith just has a way of understanding the artistic vision. It's not just, you know, in, in a lot of situations, a producer has their own sound and they stick with that. But working with Keith is, it's definitely a collaboration because he's got his expertise and he knows, you know, what he's doing 1 million percent. But at the same time, he still can understand and take my creative direction in a way and make it a collaborative thing um so it's yeah but i mean he pretty much just will take my idea and just fine tune it and he hears what i have to say and i really appreciate that and yeah yeah it's super important to have somebody come in to help you but not completely change your entire vision right. and your voice along the way which is hard too being in nashville a lot of producers here are very country driven mm -hmm. and i will say i do have some country roots being from texas but yeah my my vibe i guess is like more alternative and weird kind of sad moody mm -hmm. and i've always been like that so i'm just kind of sticking with it but yeah he was definitely a golden find here in nashville of course um so speaking of your fellow texans taylor holder you did a cover with um, jazz magazine with him. And I know you've been on covers of magazines like L'Officiel and Untitled. How do you see yourself um, incorporating your fashion, your love for fashion into your career in the future? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I kind of started as a model because my mom used to model in the 80s. She was a pretty mm -hmm. popular model. And I got into that whole thing and I had fun doing it. And I probably could have continued doing that. But it always intrigued me what the photographer was doing. Like, yes, I am essentially like the muse of, mm -hmm. you know, the product, but it was always so fascinating to me, you know, him changing the settings and doing this and that. And I loved the art behind it and the creative vision. 
And so that kind of got me thinking like, maybe this modeling thing is not for me. Yeah. Um, and I started, you know, writing my music and stuff, which I've always been doing, but I started taking it more seriously. And I realized being a successful model, which I wouldn't call myself a model. I do modeling occasionally, but being a successful model in this day and age, you kind of have to be a triple threat. I mean, look mm -hmm. at Kendall Jenner, Gigi Hadid, Bella Hadid. You know, they came from reality TV um, and, you know, celebrity parents and uh, oh, what's Johnny, Johnny Depp's daughter, uh, Lily, Lily Rose. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous. But yeah, yeah triple threat for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's kind of if I do a modeling thing, I want it to be about my music first because mm -hmm. my art, that's my craft. And, you know, I can perfect the art of makeup and color my hair and go work out and do this and that and look good behind a camera if I need to. But this is something that's in my soul that, you know, I, I can't force where everything else you can just, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Like, you can do your hair and makeup as much as you want, but the music this is coming from inside. Something I can be proud of. Cause yeah. I don't know. Like it's, it's, ugh, it's going to sound so bad, but it's kind of like receiving a superficial compliment from a guy or something. Mm -hmm. in my deep. Obviously I appreciate that and I'm not going to take it for granted. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But when you hear so much superficial, just based on the picture, hot girl, yada, yada. Yeah. It doesn't land at the end of the day. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate that. But if only you knew my soul. And I guess yeah. that's what I'm trying to do here is, you know, there's more to people. And yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, how did you, I know you mentioned earlier that it started with writing poetry and in your younger life, you've been writing poetry. I saw that. Um, how did you transition that into writing music? Was there a specific instance where you knew you wanted to to switch over? Yeah, I guess I kind of had this weird moment. It this Christmas morning of, I must have been 10 years old or something like that. I was a baby. And we had this surround sound going in our house and Selena Gomez had just dropped a new song. And I heard it and I really listened to the lyric part of the song. And I was like, of course, I was 10. I obviously could not have done this, but I was like, I could do that. And I started hearing music from that point on, not as music and something enjoyable to listen to, but as why am I not doing this? I could write something like this. And in my 10 year old mind, I started kind of panicking because all of the good songs, I was like, I should have thought of that. And it made me like, oh, I need to get on this before all of the good songs get taken right. up. And I run out and I can never be, you know, it was like this funny thing. And then I guess I, a uh, couple Christmas later, or a couple Christmases later, uh, my dad got me a Taylor guitar and I, I, I'm pretty sure I opened it before I was supposed to. I could not resist. And I just started teaching myself and everything I've done pretty much is self-taught, um, because, yeah, I mean, you can figure out how to do anything on YouTube nowadays. I like having that direction and control. And, like, it's my one thing in my life that I feel like I have complete power over. Yeah, completely. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the Taylor guitar is always the best present to get. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know you mentioned earlier talking about how you like to um, interact with your fans on TikTok. And that's a good way for you to get feedback and whatnot. Um, can you talk a little bit more about how the app has just changed your career path? Like how have you want, marketed yourself over there and interacted yeah. with things you might not have gotten before? Yeah. TikTok's a weird thing, man. Cause like mm -hmm. if you want to go viral, TikTok is the way to do it. There's, there's a specific algorithm type thing you can follow to better your chances of having success on a video. 
And so I just hit this weird point over COVID actually, right when it started, everyone was in quarantine. We had to stay at the house anyways. I realized I don't have any more excuses to not be doing this. And I had friends doing it kind of on Instagram and that kind of thing. And I realized TikTok was the new wave. And mm-hmm. I saw other people going viral. And I was like, I could do that. I could do that. So I committed myself. Uh, I told myself I was going to post two videos every single day. I think it was uh, my senior year of high school is when this happened. Two videos every day. And um, for I gave myself probably like four months, which at the time we didn't know how long COVID was going to last. But I committed to doing that knowing that I would be posting things that are deemed as cringy, which when I look back at some of the videos I posted, I'm like, I would have bullied me too. I, I, I will say I got a little bit roasted in high school was kind of the topic of some of the group chats. Rightfully so. I would have roasted me too. At the time I was like, you know, people are mean to me. Like, why are they making fun of my captions and this and that? But I'm like, cause it's weird, but I don't regret it. And, and yeah. I knew that going into it, I was like, I'm going to be roasted if I do this, but I would rather do it and like have this be my thing once I leave high school in five minutes, than not do it at all. And, you know, waste my time during COVID doing nothing, just being at home. So I stuck to it and I made a couple cringy video. I look at them as cringy now. Some people might not, but they're long deleted by now. I'm sure you can find them on YouTube, but Um, I did that and I just kind of started growing a following on there and I'd go live and, you know, just started meeting some of the people and there's a couple, um, there's a couple probably like, it's an interesting range because it's either like super old guys that follow me or like 12 to 17 year old girls. And those girls are my favorite to interact with. They're so kind and I know some of them look up to me, so I try to be like a good role model and I try to interact when I can, but it gets, it gets hard to do that sometimes with Instagram, like messaging, you can't message on TikTok. So really the only time I'm like communicating back and forth is when I'm on a live stream, but I do love doing it and hearing their stories. And uh, I will say this, this girl DM'd me um, the other day and she sent me this paragraph and she said, um, Hey Sydney, you know, moral of the story we met last year at a concert and you were so kind to me. And I just, she's like, I'm 17 and you're a little bit older than me, but um, you know, I love what you're doing and it's really inspiring. And I just wanted you to know that that instance when we met at that concert and you were just so kind to me for no reason at all, like it really changed, you know, it, it, this affected her. Mm -hmm. And in that, like, I can't even explain it to you. It genuinely healed like a part of my child, like my inner child. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it makes it all worth it. (laughs) Yeah. And, and it made me like, just think it's so crazy because growing up, I was like really awkward and like weird kid. And then I learned the science behind beauty. Mm -hmm. the hair I made myself into this product like I really did but I'm this weird shy like social anxiety person on the inside and I still am that and I'm working on it but when I heard this person tell me this it really healed like my inner child because you know the kid that get got picked on for doing what she loved and not giving an f and just full sending in I'm glad that I did that. And I'm like, I hope you do that too. Because I don't know. It was just, it was a very surreal moment. Cause I'm like, she looks up to me, man. And to me, it's like, it's me. Yep. And I'm still this awkward, anxious person. That's not completely secure. I'm a huge believer in fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. And anxiety. And I get socially awkward and you know, I'm not perfect. And I've got my own issues but confidence is key. And if you're not a confident person, my mom used to tell me this all the time when I was struggling growing up because I was not cute. I was quite ratchet. Um, she's like, honey, if you're not confident, you just fake it till you make it. You tell yourself that you are and you're that bleep 
and then one day you'll believe it. Absolutely. Like, How do you do it? How do you do it? I can't. I'm I'm not like I hate myself. And then I just I just remained me. I kept the people that loved me close. Didn't try to fit in. I was just myself. And now I believe it. And I have my weak moments too, of course, where, you know, I get insecure and whatever. But when it comes down to it, the only people you have to impress yourself and the, the people that love you and have your best interest. It's not everybody else, you know? I couldn't agree more. It costs nothing to be kind, but mm. it really could help someone out. Um, Unfortunately, that is all the time we have left for today. I thank you so much for coming and talking to Pop Dust. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Sid Single Insane is out now. Follow us on Pop Dust for more.